For those of you wanting to upskill your precision and graphic work, I have the person for you. We have award-winning hairstylist, international educator, Brett McDonald. Everybody, welcome Hi. back to the show. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for having me back, everybody. Right, your travel was a little bit messed up this morning. Your flight wasn't going to yeah, land in Dublin. Well, we had it last time, last year, and then they again this year. I was like, what are they trying to say to me? But what we got hell? in some, some cloudy weather, but we're here and we're super excited yeah. about today. Are you, are you like borderline going to go to Shannon or Belfast or something and then come back down to Dublin? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. But anyway, we, we, we didn't have the opportunity to chat to you the last time because um, it was quite fast moving, but we are so thrilled to have you back. Um, listen, tell our viewers a little bit about you, your background and something that they may not know about you. So, Ooh, what you may not know. I'm, I originate from Australia. Yeah. You, I'm sure our English um, viewers will probably pick up the accent, but some yeah. people may not be aware I'm yeah, Australian. Yeah. Um, I was born and lived out there for um, the first part of my apprenticeship in life. And then I moved to the UK when I was about 21 and started working at Sassoon's. Um, I worked um, in their salon and academies for a little while okay. um, before relocating back to you Australia. You were a qualified stylist then, were you? Yeah. At this stage? Okay. Yeah. You and, were a qualified uh, stylist. Yeah, then. I did my retraining and then I worked um, down in Queen Street, actually. Their academy's no longer there now. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a long time ago. Can I just, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt you and come in, but I just want to come in there, right? You see, whenever you joined Sassoon's, what was that like? So you came in and basically had to retrain, you had to do a little vardering, or was it, was, yeah. it, was it like a little program that you had to do? Yeah, it was, quite, it was quite good, actually. I did a vardering under two people. I'm sure you've probably heard of the names. Um, Johnny Schumacher was one of my yep. educators um, and, and mentors there. And also another guy called um, Darren Newton, or people know him as Stan from Hob as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, I got, to, I got really fortunate training there. Amazing with some training. great, great mentors. Um, but yeah, it was intense. Mm. Um, and, but you know, that's what we, we love to do. Okay, so back to your story, are you with Sassoon's for how long? Uh, a couple of years, not that long in the end. Um, okay. But I just picked up a really great um, base and, a, and a, a really great understanding of, of what technical hairdressing was really about. Up mm -hmm. until that stage, I was, I was a little bit like not quite sure of what, I guess the techniques of, of the, the classics, if you like, in relation yeah. to precision cutting. Was your work slightly clouded? Like it wasn't as like clean and polished back then? Or? I think so. I came from a, I, I was trained in Australia by a mm. classic hairdresser yeah. who's like the grandfather of Australian hairdressing. Okay. His name's Stelios Pappas. And he's a great, great hairdresser and great teacher. But he would say, you know, you, you sort of feel the hair, Brett. And mm. I'm a fairly, you know, analytical guy. And I was a bit like, I don't quite get it. Mm. And it was when I went to Sassoon's and they started to take me through shapes technically that, yeah. you know, somebody turned the light on for me. And from there, I sort of just kept going and, and that was that. Okay, very mm. good. Tell us a bit about Mahogany. You went to Mahogany yeah. shortly after that, did you? Well, you took it back to Australia, yeah, is that correct? Yeah, when, when um, Mahogany moved out to Australia, um, a friend of mine um, set it up and, and I was involved in the early stages of the of the setup of Mahogany out there. So we were doing a lot of the planning and things. And Richard Thompson would come over, he's a, um, a lovely guy, and we were um, doing things with Mahogany out there at the time. And that was really interesting as well. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a really great company to work for, really great people, and, and yeah, I had a really fantastic time with them as well. Okay. What, where, where, where did it go from that? I mean, how did you end up back in, because uh, you went to Australia then for how long? Yeah, I was in Australia for a while, but I just really missed the UK. Um, I'd done some things, I'd, I'd been in the finals for Australian Hairdresser of the Year with Which Mahogany and with um, Synergy, another company out there, and they were great, but mm -hmm. I felt like I just missed UK. I just missed the European lifestyle and just the connection to different people and cultures and stuff. And, you know, as much as I love Australia, it's always been my home. You know, I, I think my heart sort of went to London when I moved there the first time and that's drew me back there um, okay. uh, to, to just go back into my hairdressing and, and to, to push more boundaries again with my, with my hairdressing. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you've established cult. What is cult? Tell our viewers a little bit about cult education. Cult education, well, in a nutshell, we're about educating with purpose. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do and what we endeavour to do is make sure that our education um, has some cut through. Mm -hmm. uh, what sometimes we find in, in the educational sphere is there's lots of great education going on, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's not geared towards the student's needs or sometimes it's more sort of like one shoe fits all. And what we try to do at Cult is we try to sort of 
understand the, the students or understand the needs of, of the different people on the courses and then tailor our courses to suit those, either the students or, or the different groups. And that, we find, um, gives us a much more effective um, educational tool for our clients. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, where, where do you, uh, people book you? Do you go out to them or do they come to you? You've got the academy? No, we mainly do external education at the external. moment. Okay. Yeah, so we're still working on external education. Um, you can jump on our website, it's cult.london, okay. um, and you can have a look. It's got a breakdown of our different courses and um, everything's quite transparent there. It's got all of our different um, educators and, and all of our information. And from there, a lot of the time we go to people, we'll fly out. It's much, it's, it, tends to be cheaper these days and more cost effective for people to bring the educators to them I certainly rather think than so, people yeah. to come to London. Um, and I think also now that we're much more international, um, just globally, I think people can still stay in touch with what's happening in London. I think in the past people would want to come to London to maybe touch the fashion or the street scene, whereas people get that already in their own cities. What they really want is their education and the hands-on work, and that's what we do. Very good indeed. Yeah. You were just all the way in Taiwan. Yeah, we were in Taiwan. It was amazing. That was incredible. Yeah, we had a great time. Um, mm. I was really... following you on the, on the stories. You can go to Brett McDonald on the stories. Um, actually, not on stories, on Instagram and follow him. Yeah. But that was great, actually. I loved yeah. all, watching all those. Uh, yeah, we had, a great, we had a great time. We, we did some work out there at a, at a really great academy out there. Um, and we did a little bit of a sort of collaboration course where we did some long hair, we did some classic work, and mm. then we did some creative work. So that was a really, really great um, course. Since then we've been up in, um, we were over in Siberia as well, we did our classic course, we do a five day classic course which is really fantastic. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's where we teach the principles of precision hairdressing in a um, lecture on the first day and then for the remaining four days, like the rest of the week, we do every single one of the nine classic shapes in a work session with the students. Wow. So they get to cover off every single haircut and we felt that was really important in giving them the full understanding of the, the spectrum of what we consider our foundational work. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the only courses that's running anywhere that actually covers all nine haircuts. I think that's very, very important for you to do that. Very, very important for you to do that, um, to cover all those haircuts, because otherwise people dabble with one haircut or two haircuts to, carry, uh, to, to cover the whole thing. It's very, very important. Yeah. I do, do agree with that. Um, listen, tell, tell me a little bit about um, your inspiration. Where do you draw, get your inspiration from or who's been your mentor in your career? Oh, um, you know, like I said earlier, I've had great mentors like Gianni and, and Darren and also um, like my original boss, Stelios, he was a great mentor to me. Um, now, further on in my career, I think I look to lots of different people mm -hmm. and lots of different platforms. And I think that's one of the nice things about hairdressing live or even like even social media to some degree. Mm -hmm. We've got lots of information coming through but sometimes it's exhibitions, sometimes it's, it's more of a sort of creative tangents in those worlds, mm -hmm. or sometimes it's hairdressing influence. I, I, sort of, I, I just try to keep my eyes open and, and, and absorb the world around me. Okay, very good yeah. indeed. Look, um, you have niched down, am I correct in saying this, you have niched down on an education area, right? Um, what is it about education that drives you? I mean, why, why not be a salon hairdresser? I mean, what is it about education that keeps you going in your career? I, don't, I think it's the knowledge, I think it's learning. I find it so inspiring when I see hairdressers who are my age or older or, you know, or, you know, experienced, well experienced hairdressers with their own salons and their teams and a really great individual hairdresser still coming for knowledge and still coming to learn. And to me, that's one of the most inspiring things about education. Mm -hmm. You know, that you're never too old to learn, you're never you never know too much to know too much. You know, it's, it's, yeah. there's always something to learn. So I love that about education and, and I get a kick out of just exploring with people, just knowledge and information. I think that's why you're a good fit for salons as well though. I mean, for me, um, like I mean, salon environments, um, like I'm, I'm a salon owner myself, and we educate in the salon, but it's nice to get some outside influence to come in because I think it stamps a different authority on your, on your team and they give it, get an outside influence and, um, on different, inf uh, get different education techniques um, and I think it's very, very valuable. It strengthens the team uh, rather than weakens it or dilutes and I think about it. And I think people over the years have been a little bit cautious about bringing outside influences in 
Um, and I think it's very important that we, we can all learn from each other. I mean, very much so. I mean, I learn from you, you learn from me, or, you know, even when you're teaching people, isn't it? Right, yes. you, you're teaching environments, and I think you, you, you pick inspirations from different people. I think it's really, really good that way. Look, tell our, tell our viewers a little bit about, um, if, if, have you got anything that you would like to improve on in your career, or oh. even on a personal level? I mean, is there, is there anything that you believe that you could strengthen? Yeah, for sure. It's funny you ask that, because, um, Obviously, you know, you've had some greats on, 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 um, on the portal and, and you've worked with, you know, some of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, I'm looking into doing um, a master's in um, hair. It's one of the only courses in the world that's a master's in hair and wig making. And it's run oh, wow. out of Pioneer Studios. Okay, very and it's good. actually, it's a, um, it's a government supported master's degree. And um, it runs out of Pioneer. Um, and so I'm looking into doing that and taking on that as a two day a week project over a year. Um, it's a year that you have to commit to. Um, okay. and and how often is that then per week? Is that two days a week. Two days a week. Yeah, two days okay. a week. Okay. Yeah, right. so it's a fairly intensive year long course. Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually really interesting. That covers off wig making and a lot more of the, um, the history of hair fashion and the, the classical work right from the ground up. Um, so yeah, that's a really exciting project that I'm looking to take on for myself. Oh, when's that happening? Uh, September. September. Okay, yeah. Good. So. Good luck with that. So yeah, exactly. Um, I've, I've got to um, get through a round with the portfolio, mm -hmm. um, and you. It usually stems that you have a degree first, but um, obviously industry, um, industry, reputation or industry experience counts as well. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, that's, um, you know that's what, I think our industry never stands me. still. And I think that's what keeps us all sort of enthusiastic about, you know, progressing and um, challenging ourselves a little bit further. I'm glad you are challenging yourself that way. Look, um, I would like to ask you, what are you going to be doing today in today's classes? Uh, today, I've got um, a really great model to begin with. Um, one of my female models. She's got some really beautiful blonde hair mm -hmm. um, and we're going to do something quite strong today. I know last time we did something a little bit textural um, and a little playful, but today is going to be a little, a little stronger. Um, a lot of the work that I've put out with Colt um, to date has been fairly um, brand driven and, and not too overly, I guess you would say maybe hairdressery. It's a little bit easier, to, uh, more palatable. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to we're going to push it up a little bit of a gear. So okay, today you're going to see something a little bit stronger and a little bit nice. a little bit tougher with some hair today. Nice, nice. And you're going to be uh, doing a gent in the afternoon as yes, well. Yes. So yeah. What are you going to be doing with the gents? This yeah. afternoon, keeping it keeping a lot of the um, principles of gents hairdressing that we work on. I'm going to try and sort of give that information over and try and impart some of my understanding around what makes men's work work. Mm -hmm. um, and then beyond that, push the shape a little bit further out and just sort of move it into a bit of a stronger fashion look, okay, but at the same good. time with a really nice masculine feel. Look, I can't wait for this afternoon anyway. For those of you um, who want to purchase um, Brett's class, you can go to hairdressinglive.com. And plus, um, for all uh, more information on Brett's uh, education, you can go to hairdressinglive.com and you can click his little link at the bottom of the page, which takes you to his all his information if you want to contact him as well. Thank you very much, Brett. Thank you, Thanks Paul. Lot. Thank you. Thank you. If you like what you've seen, leave a comment below and subscribe to our YouTube channel.